The information about the upcoming Mortal Kombat 1 is rolling in fast. Big names in the fighting game community have put up videos showing footage they were allowed to record at the reveal event, and they're breaking down how the game works. Videos by Justin Wong, Maximilian, Sonic Fox, they're all entertaining and informative to a degree, but none compare to the breakdown given by Ketchup and Mustard, and if you follow the NRS scene, that should come as no surprise to you. What I'd like to do here is focus on certain points I notice while watching all these players' footage and express my thoughts. I'm starting to get kind of excited for this game, I've been an MK fan all my life, and I like seeing the steps they're taking in the right direction. The first thing I started noticing when watching people play this game is that, sure enough, the meter burn system is essentially gone. Special moves have returned to the classic system of pressing the meter button simultaneously with your special input to perform an enhanced special. No more of this doing a special attack and then hitting the meter button to change your special after the fact. We were right. I said in my video that MK11's ability to meter burn punishable specials on block and confirm into potentially safe follow-ups and mix-ups was awful and needed to go. I was called a scrub that couldn't deal with mind games from all kinds of defenders of the game, and tough titties you're all gonna have to deal with actually committing to your specials now. The whole regenerating meter thing also made meter burn specials extra obnoxious because people always had the meter to spend, and why not spend it? It's not like meter was used for breakers or supers, there was no reason to not regularly use meter burn in your game. The meter burn mechanic helped make MK11's gameplay feel random and generally boring to spectate. Doing an attack string into a special is already a mix-up in itself. We didn't need the special to also become its own mix-up after the mix-up. And now, thank the Elder Gods, they have removed that mechanic that was invented in Injustice. Honest special attacks are back like they were in MK9, and that's very encouraging. Yes, you will still be able to use cameo characters in block pressure, but you're not going to see people doing a punishable special on block, confirming that, and then calling a cameo character to cover their ass. It's not going to work that way. Also gone from the Injustice era is the breakaway system. Classic combo breakers are back, and as explained by Ketchup and Mustard, they now require all three meters to be full and a full cameo bar. That's a wild resource requirement, and it's going to mean combos are just not going to be broken that often. However, the combo breaker is now much more powerful because they can be used to break fatal blows. That is huge. Breaking out of a super. It's going to be really interesting to see how the end of a match goes when you know your opponent has fatal blow. Are you going to hold on to your resources to potentially break it? Are people going to be scared to use their cameo assist for fear of getting hit with a fatal blow? I'm curious how that's going to feel. Fatal Blows now have a cinematic startup animation as well, so they'll be less viable to just throw out randomly. Interactables are gone. Goodbye. One by one we're seeing the elements of Injustice disappear, letting Mortal Kombat be Mortal Kombat again. While we're taking this victory lap, celebrating the death of the meter burn mechanic in Mortal Kombat, let us also celebrate the nerfing of the flawless block mechanic, in the exact way I wanted it to be nerfed. First, there are no more flawless block reversals. You're not going to get flawless block launched just because you dared to press a button when you had the advantage. No more characters like Scarlet and Shao Kahn unable to use their primary attack strings because the gap means they get flawless block reversaled every time. That shit had to go, and it did. I wanted flawless block to only negate chip damage, and that's exactly what they've done. It just negates chip damage now. It appears to negate the chip damage of an entire string, so it's still powerful. Second is the inclusion of a new mechanic called upblock, designed to punish people for careless jump-ins, and even leading to combo punishing of an overhead on a read. This appears to be the only remnant of the whole flawless block changing frame data thing, and it's been simplified into very specific uses. I approve. It appears that very few attacks actually change the frame data from flawless blocking. Looking at this screen here, every Sub-Zero normal attack and attack string has the same frame data from both block and flawless block, except for his down 2, so maybe that means down 2s are uniquely punishable. It's crazy, the three biggest things that made me dislike MK11 so much that I went into detail about in my video, Fatal Blow, Meter Burn Specials, and Flawless Blocking, have seen significant changes in the case of Flawless Blocking, rebalancing in the case of Fatal Blows with the startup animation and ability to combo break them, or straight up removal like the Meter Burn mechanic. No, I'm not taking credit, I'm just saying that I'm incredibly happy. And to all of you who felt me on these issues, and I know there's a lot of you, this is a moment to rejoice. 
Regardless of how the game ultimately turns out, this is a victory. Enjoy the moment. We can also enjoy the fact that the auto regen meter has been reverted back to the classic 3 bar EX system. No more defensive bar, just classic meter. Enhanced specials have armor on them sometimes, at least when you use them as wake up options as far as I understand, and some specials have a couple different ways to enhance them, spending 2 bars of meter on them, according to the video by Maximilian. Additionally, there is now only one delayed wake up timing, and there's no rolling away. You either eat that pressure or make the read with a wake up. If you don't have special meter for armored wake up, you also have the option to call your cameo character, and while they don't have armor, they have some frames of invulnerability. As Ketchup and Mustard put it, the character wake up options are from MKX, and the cameo wake up options are like MK9. Two different kinds of cameo attacks exist on the ground and another in the air. There may be more, I don't know, but the interesting thing about the ground attacks is that one of them leaves your character standing still and the other can be used while you're moving. That's the one you'll be using in your block pressure or to convert strings into combos. You can see Sub-Zero actually converting his low string into slide into a combo by using Kano's knife assist. Pretty cool stuff. The ground and air assists combined with the new air combat attacks should lead to a lot of creativity and player expression, as people use different cameos with their main character. It seems like it's going to be a much more tolerable version of the variation systems that the Mortal Kombat games have been relying on lately. According to Ketchup and Mustard, cameo characters can be called to absorb the hit of a projectile, but your character takes damage when they get hit. I don't know if it's full or reduced damage, but I imagine this could be a cool way to get in on a zoner. You can see here in Maximilian's video where Kenshi jump kicks into the Sonya assist and Sub-Zero glows red, taking damage. Maximilian's video also talks about how crushing blows are completely gone, that he was trying to get a down 2 crushing blow on a throw attempt and got nothing special for it. That has me hoping that throws are also not nearly as powerful as they were in MK11, since they don't also have a punishing counter. Wow, that's a lot of information. It's fascinating, really. Please go watch Ketchup and Mustard's video. I got most of this from them. I'm starting to get hype, guys. I really am. I want the game already. See you in the next one.